Hello everybody, Laszlo here. Welcome to part two of the Pong mini game series. In this game, in this video, we'll be setting up our project um, and we'll be creating all the assets, all the resources that we need. We won't be coding them or anything like that, just getting them ready to go based on the design documents that we um, created in the previous video. So let's get started. I'm making a new project. This is Game Maker Studio 2, new project. Uh, game Maker language. I always try and stay away from drag and drop. Uh, systems because they give you much less control than coding. Uh, it's called the project Pong. I'm going to save it on my desktop. There we go. Okay, so um, let's jump right into it. I know from my design documents that I'm, I need a few sprites. Um, actually, I wanted to show you guys a new feature of Game Maker Studio too. Um, you can click this plus sign up in the top um, right corner. And clicking this lets you select what you want to create. So I want to create sprites, but it also lets you tell, choose how many you want to make. So in my case, I want to make a few. I want to make a logo, so that's one. I've got a single player and multiplayer button, so it's two more, so it's three. I've got a central divider, four. I've got a paddle, that's five. A ball, that's six. And um, I think that's it. Is that it? Yes, that's it. So there, so this way it does call them sprite one, two, three, four, five, six, not ideal. We can always double click once. So I'm just double left clicking on the sprite and I'm changing the name, lowercase s, and then I'm gonna call this one logo. So this is my sprite for the logo. Um, next one, this one I will call s um, button sp, sp stands for single player. Sprite 3, we're going to rename S button MP for multiplayer. Let's call this S line. I'm not really sure what else to call it. Uh, sprite 5, what is that? S paddle. And then the last one, I believe, is S ball okay so we've got we know that once we get started on actually creating these resources we'll need to draw all of these things um for objects okay let's move, let's do rooms first rooms are kind of like what we did on the very, very first page of the design document so let's make some rooms um the way i like to make rooms is i like to code or set up one room the way i need it and then i duplicate that room so let's go into room one let's start by renaming it um or do you rename a room I think you have to right click and rename. So this I'll call R menu. And I want my game to be 800 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall. And I'm happy about that. So that gives me a room like this. It's a good shape. Do I need anything else? Yeah, I'll need an asset layer. So let's go create a new asset layer. Let's just rename that to assets. So an asset layer, a cool feature about this is um, you can drag sprites onto your room. So you don't have to create objects and draw them, drop them onto an instance layer. You can simply grab your sprites and drag them onto a room. It's uh, very efficient and it takes a lot less processing power than having an object with all of its functions and events hap triggering uh, versus just a sprite that's being displayed. Um, and we'll need it for things like logo, the line. I think that's it. Okay, so I think we've got the room nicely set up. It's got the right size. It's got the three layers that we need. Perfect. So I can close that and now I'm going to duplicate it. Call this room uh, single player. Let's duplicate it again. Room multiplayer. And let's duplicate one last time and call this room um, game over. So we've got our four rooms, perfect. And now we can move on to our, um, uh, let's go objects. Oh, here we can actually use this plus sign again because we'll be creating a lot of objects. So create object, objects. Okay, so let's really think about this hard. So starting in the main menu, we will need two buttons. So that's two objects. Uh, moving on to the next one, we'll need 
uh, three different types of paddles. So we got single player, or player one, player two, and a computer. So that's three paddles. Then we've got the ball. So it's up to six objects. We've got um, the game controller. That's seven objects. We've got the game over uh, score, um, like the winner display. That's another one. We got the two scorekeepers. So that's two more. And then I think that's it for the objects that we need. Um, yeah, so let's start with that. Perfect, so we got all these objects. Let's start once again, try, kind of make my way through the uh, design document. So on the first page, I remember I had, it's the main menu, I had two buttons. So let's start with lowercase o, represents the that it's an object. Button, so what kind of, like if there's, if there's categories of objects, you should always name them with a category name first. So o button, um, what is this? Single, SP, I'll just do SP because that's what I did for sprites. So there's my single player button. And at this point I can actually go and select and assign the sprite to it. So S button single player belongs to O button single player. Perfect. I can double click or I can go into another object. Let's just pick this one. I'm gonna call this one O button MP. So this is the multiplayer button and I can assign the sprite to it. Um, multiplayer sprite, perfect. Then thinking, so now we're into the single player mode. So we will need, let's do the obvious one first. The ball, this is shared between all the different modes. So there's gonna be the ball. And once again, I can go and assign the sprite to the ball object. So the ball, the, the object's got the sprite assigned to it. Perfect. Um, let's do the paddles next. So we've got O paddle, I'll call it, P1, so it's player one. I can assign the paddle to it. There we go. Let's make another one. O paddle P2, so this is player two paddle. Uh, same thing, I can assign the paddle sprite to it. Next we got O paddle um, let's call it CPU, computer, same thing, I can assign the paddle to it, or the sprite, paddle sprite to it, where are we so far, so we've got the ball, we've got the paddles, we've got the menu buttons, okay, so we need now a scorekeeper, so O score, I'm going to call it lowercase O for object, capital S for score, uh, let's just do player one. This one does not have a sprite. So some objects generate their own graphics. In this case, this one's going to be generating some fonts or some uh, text onto our screen. So that's O score player one. Let's make this one O score player two. And of course you could make these be more generic objects. So I could just make a generic score object and have it be configurable so it displays different variables depending on how you set it up but I think that's more advanced than uh, this class, so I'm not gonna go that way. Um, and then we also need a game controller. Game controller also does not have a sprite. It controls logic, does not have to show anything. And then finally we have the um, oh, game over, let's call it game over. So this is the this one also does not have a sprite. This will show some text in the final room telling you who the game, who the winner is. Okay, so we got all the objects. Mm, what else do we need? We also need. I think we should do at least one sound, possibly two. So once because there's more than more than one object or one sound we're creating, I'm gonna click the plus sign. Sounds. Let's make two sounds. And two sounds are going to be, I like to use the abbreviation SND for sound. SND bounce, so this is when the ball bounces. And then the other one I'm going to call SND um, point, it's called point. So when somebody scores a point, um, this is the sound that's gonna play. Okay, so I think with that we have all of our um, 
resources that we're going to be needing for this game all set up. So from now on, we have to go in and start um, creating them or setting them. Okay. I think I'm going to make one more object. Let's make one more object. I just thought of this. Um, there's a cool concept in programming called parenting or inheritance. I want to take advantage of it. So I'm going to call this paddle parent. And uh, this one does not need a sprite. So all this is, is an object that I can set up all their interactions is between the ball and this object. And when I set these other ones to be children, so paddle CPU, player one, player two, they'll be children of the parent. And that means if the ball bounces off the parent, it'll also bounce off all the children. It just saves some coding. Okay. So with that, I think our project is set up and ready to go. Um, we just need to jump in and start coding these individual things. Okay. See you guys in the next video.